So, yes, welcome everybody to the second uh, virtual visit of Rubismo. Today we are going to the University of Bonn. Uh, and this is part of our cafe talk. So I will, I will uh, really shortly tell you a bit more about the, the Rubismo project. So Rubismo, uh, think about replicable um, business models applied to rural areas. We are focusing on three particular um, sectors, trying to cover the whole, all the innovative businesses in rural areas. So we have the food value chain, bio-based value chain, and the ecosystem services. Uh, today, we will mostly focus on the bio-based value chain, but we see uh, through the, the project, there's a lot of links uh, between the different sectors. It's not, uh, it's not boxes with clear borders. Um, yeah, so the project is three years and we are in the last year, the last 10 months, nine months. Uh, so we're happy to, to share some of the results um, at least. So the, this study visit is rounded, rounding up the second uh, circle of Rubismo Cafe Talks we, we had, which are inspirational talks uh, for 30 minutes every week uh, from uh, 11 o'clock. And it's every Tuesday. Um, so some of them, well, uh, the one, the f two first one will not be available online, but the other one are all recorded and you can find them on the website uh, quite soon. So let's uh, go to the start the, the, the actual uh, study visit. And I would like to, to introduce you a bit to the, the main actors of today. So we have our, our guide, uh, Professor uh, Schiffer from University of Bonn. Uh, then we have two other, I call them experts in the bio products, the, the bio-based value chain. Uh, so we have Ludes Moll, who is here, and Professor Pude that will join quite soon. And then we should also have um, two representants from Crea Paper, uh, a company um, working in the bio-based value chain. In, uh, I don't know if Uwe Danione is here and uh, Corina Chisman has joined yet, but they should be joining us for the for the, the question uh, round after the, after the presentation. So, Gerard, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. And it, I can uh, tell you it will be an enjoyable visit. So traditionally, farm produce food. Today we are discussing about uh, renewable resources that are being produced by farms for developing non-food products. And uh, next slide, please. Justin, okay, and now I want to show you where we are going to meet. You see here on the left side, the Rhine Valley, and then there's a, a red uh, circle, and that's the city of Bonn. And in the center, you see a small picture, and you can see that Bonn is very close to the countries of the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Below you see me, I'm trying to guide you through the visit. Next slide, please. And the region we are going to meet is a very fertile one. It's very good for farm production. It's one of the three German centers for food and adults, and it's very warm. Some people call it the most northern part of the Italian Riviera. Next slide, please. And in this area, we, oh, that's one too much. We have a, a, a corporation where different companies together with research and a member of this uh, uh, network, we call it Bioinnovation Park Rhineland, is the experimental site of the University of Bonn. And that's where we are going to meet. You see here in the lower part, the place, the experimental farm, where we will meet right now. And now I ask you to fly, take a flight, go over and try to uh, land close to Bonn. And now we start the virtual visit. I invite you to participate in a virtual visit in the Bioinnovation Park Rhineland, which is a network where three universities, two communities and about 30 companies work together. The intention is to develop new products in food 
and bio-based resources. When you look around here, you can see a number of glass houses. It's at the outskirts of one of the experimental farms of the University of Bonn, which is at the center of this park. And here in the back, here you can see the heating system, where the heating is produced for all the glass houses, and it's wood from pruning and from grass. And at our next station, we will look at some of those grasses that are at the center point of the Bioinnovation Park developments. Here we can see the specific grass which we have been working with. It's a grass called Miscanthus, and it grows very fast during the year, and it doesn't need a very good soil. And it's a basis for the production of paper, for the production of insulation material, for the production of building material, and whatsoever. We will later see, when we go move to the experimental farm, how they develop products in a lab based on this grass. Here to the right, we have some of the products we are developing out of renewable resources. It's building blocks for houses. And some of those houses have already been built in Switzerland, and we are on the way of getting improvement also in Germany and other countries. Our next station will be the experimental farm, where we will meet Professor Pude. Welcome to this experimental site of the University of Bonn. It's an old farmhouse. Maybe you can show around a little bit. And it has been transformed into offices and small labs. And it was a kind of a breeding site for many, many small enterprises and start-up enterprises. And I welcome here Professor Pude of the University of Bonn, who has a professorship for renewable resources, if I'm right. And he has been promoting many of those small companies that evolved out of this uh, site. Professor Pude, maybe you can say a few words uh, what your research is all about. Oh, welcome. Um, we are working with plants, um, with different plants, perennial and annual plants. And we develop products out of the plants, for example, for building materials or for paper production and so on. Okay, and you are prepared to show us a little bit around because it's a virtual visit. Sorry, you cannot be here in person, but uh, I think it's almost the same. So, Professor Pude, would you like to show us around? Yeah, let us go there. <laughs> okay, we move back there. The entrance to one of those small labs and Professor Pude will show us now around and discuss a little bit uh, about his research activities. Let us go inside. <laughs> You can see we are working with uh, plants like Miscanthus chanagrass. It's growing up every year four meters high. And this plant binds 30 tons CO2 per hectare in year. This is very, very high. And this is a silica-rich, lignin-rich biomass. And okay. then we want to use this biomass not for energy, because it's too simple to use it only for energy, we want to develop products out of these plants like Miscanthus or cup plant and popular or willow. So higher value products. Higher value products. Okay. And to do this, you uh, have to chop the material and you can do this, for example, in such a hammer mill. And then you get small pieces of this plant, as you can see here. And this is the most important step when you want to produce uh, high value products out of the plants because the pieces of the material are very important. The length and the right of the pieces. Oh, okay. And um, so this is the most important step. The first step, you want to have many, many biomass, so a, high, a high yield, a high CO2 storage. And then the next step is the, not the biomass, the biomass quality is important. And there is very important how to chop the material, how to do this in a hammer mill like this. Okay, so there are many other 
machines around here, but they are not of interest. We move yes, to the next place. In the back there is a sieving machine. It's important that you get different pieces of the chopped material. And so the sieving machine is very important. Then you have different parts of the biomass. And for example, the, the very small particles you can use for plastering material. And the bigger parts you can use for bigger building materials like lightweight concrete. Okay. So, okay, we move further. Step. <laughs> Next step. Step. Phase two. Now we're going in a room for biomass quality. And here you can see how we develop products out of the biomass plants. Let us go inside. So, here we have our technique room. And um, here you see many, many machines. And the first step we can see here behind, let us go there. But that's also interesting up there. Yes, um, the, what you can see here, we need the, the parenchyma content of, of the plants. And the parenchyma content, when you look in the electron microscope, it looks like similar as you can see there the styropore. Um, oh, they have the same structure, um, okay. the and yeah. so it's important how to chop the material, how to get the pieces out of the material. And so then, you are developing insulation material here. Yes. Okay. So and you. And okay, and, and everything um, here is. Yeah, we, we go to that first step here. Um, in this machine. We are when you go when you look here inside. Um, we we analyze how many particles are white, small, big, uh, round, not round in this machine. Uh, where we are evaluating the size of particles by passing them on a screen. Just have to wobble this a bit because the uh, vibration feeder has just stopped. Um, the particles are transported over this feeder for next to a screen in front of a camera which is capturing all particle shapes and sizes and immediately transporting them to this graphs here on the computer where we can see and read out what combinations of sizes I and over you on particle mm -hmm. amounts okay. we have. So we have the next station where you test the stability of the products you are creating. Uh, we are now evaluating the ultimate tensile strength of our biomaterials where we pull them apart and we measure the amount of force for a specific uh, cross-sectional er cross area of the product and can say later on how stable or strong the materials are. And if everything is set up, I can just press play and it will take a while. We can here see not much. Um, we can here see the amount of force that it took us to reach a maximum elongation. There the force is dropping off. That means that the sample has broken down. Um, and this is again... It has already has broken. Oh no, we are having a... Uh, actually we have a failed test here. Um, we have torn the sample at the clamping point oh. because it wasn't clamped in deep enough. Um, we could do this again. But we have seen how it works. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, right. maybe we have some materials like this. Oh, that's the final product. That's the final product, as you can see here. Um, <laughs> this may be that uh, in future we can produce such materials as you can see here. Um, for furniture, for example, for house material and so on. And it on. is competitive? Um, yes, but we, we want to do uh, not to use uh, chemical uh, compounds. And this is, this is our research project. We want to work with natural materials. Sure. Okay, thank you very much. We will demonstrate the application of one of the insulation materials, which find major interest in the market. It is mixed to make it sprayable and it has been produced in the lab we have just been visiting. 
And here is the rector of the university who is trying it himself and it seems to work. We are now entering the paper lab, where paper is being produced from renewable resources. We are here in a lab for preparing grants. No, yes. not preparing grants, paper for paper. grants. <laughs> paper production. <laughs> yeah, you see here many, many different uh, machinery. And these are the same machines as you will find in the big paper industry, the smaller ones. And uh, we have to to chop the material, we have to make very, very small pieces out of the material and there is a, a mill, um, um, inside there is water and it's uh, other form how to chop the material, you need water and uh, special machinery and then you have a fine material, this fine material comes up here inside and after that you, you mix the, the fine biomass material with water then you bring it to this machinery and when you, you do this here, um, then you have... Um, it's pressed down. Huh? And it's pressed down yeah. and then... Oh, yeah, you see here, it's like a... Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like a big pressure and so on. Yeah. And after that you, you get paper when you when dry this in this machinery. And this paper, we can see it here, uh, looks like this material. You see here, this is paper from um, Miscanthus and um, these are test papers and as you have seen before, um, here the strongness of the material uh, is uh, the same. But um, it's still brownish. Can, it, uh, yes, can you make um, it uh, white? Or? Yeah, you, you can have it also more oh. white. Oh, okay. And yeah. um, by this white material there is uh, more um, content of wood material inside. Oh, so it's a mixture between it is wood a mixture and grass. between wood and grass, and you see it here. Here we have uh, ten percent of uh, the renewable biomass, and ninety percent is wood. This is one hundred percent wood because okay. of white material. So you are trying to replace and wood. Uh, yes, and at the grass. end um, we have. Uh, nearly 50% of, uh, of uh, biomass and 50% of maybe we will come up to 70-80%. So this is already in industrial development when we talk about CREA paper um, and the insulation material is also already uh, sold uh, on the market. So you are developing more and more new products that can uh, find its way into the market and uh, uh, replace, uh, how do you say, chemical uh, well, uh, compounds, you know, but, um, how do you say, gasoline-based products. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So we uh, might want to go out again. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a big range because we are also developing a peat substitute material. Um, peat is a problem um, because um, it's in the future it's forbidden to, to get it from, from, the, from the soil and, and so we developed uh, also peat substitute materials for the horticulture production of uh, tomatoes or cucumber for example. And there's the other part, uh, you see we need many many uh, material to do all these different uh, ways but um, in the first, we have uh, biomass plants that fulfill the ecosystem services. These are plants uh, that, um, that are flowering, uh, that uh, uh, the, 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 con the soil is, is, is going up, it's a higher uh, um, content of um, CO2 bind in the soil, okay. erosion is not a problem and so on. So you're improving agriculture basis? But you are also developing industrial products like building blocks for houses yeah. uh, and as we said ins insulation material, paper, so it's a huge range of alternative products. So yes, you are and, we, and we start in the beginning by the plant, uh, that the plants fulfill the ecosystem services, it's uh, in the greening uh, allowed plants that the farmers can grow and at the end we have sustainable products. So you involve the farmers, so farmers get something out of it, yeah. and then there is some kind of industrialization close to the rural area and close to farmers, which produce a product. 
Thank you very much, Professor Pude. Good luck for your future research. Thank you. After the labs, we were interested in visiting some companies. Company Carado, which is producing insulation panels, and company Crea Paper, which is producing grass paper. However, due to the present situation, we could not go to the companies directly. Instead, we rely on material that has been provided by them. We selected for the virtual visit the company Crea Paper. Modest farm in Rheinbach, on the outskirts of Bonn, may be said to revolutionize the paper industry. This is because Uwe Donjonet, together with scientists from the University of Bonn, is looking into ways to use grass in paper production. Such a development was something close to the founder's heart, after he saw a report on the television about the enormous amount of wood used in the paper industry. The report presented figures revealing how an area of primeval forest the size of Switzerland is felled for the Indonesian paper industry alone. These figures were so shocking to me, I realized I needed to make a change here. The advantages are clearly apparent. While wood tends to be transported over long distances as a raw material, grass grows everywhere, making it particularly environmentally friendly. Grass can really replace trees. What we actually need for paper production is the fibers from the material. With trees, this involves a complex method of extraction. In other words, we need to use a lot of chemicals while consuming vast amounts of water and a great deal of energy to subsequently obtain cellulose from trees. Luckily, things are somewhat different with grass. In other words, we can simply process the fibers mechanically as they're almost pure. Yet it took cooperation from the Department of Renewable Raw Materials at the University of Bonn to achieve a breakthrough in the search for the ideal composition of grass in paper production. We receive hay, which we then crush in a special process so as to obtain just the right length of fiber we need later in the paper. This is then added to the pelletization process at the top. The material then falls in from above, where it is ground a little by these rollers on the die, so we can then achieve a better degree of grinding for the fibers prior to the pelletization downstream. These pellets are then taken to the paper mill and look like this. They should not be too solid nor too soft either and are then analyzed further in the next step. Uwe Danjone is on a customer visit at the Scheufelen paper mill in Leningen near Stuttgart. Although Ulrich Scheufelen is now the honorary chairman of a traditional company, he's still open to new ideas like grass paper. We're only in the early stages with grass paper. We have been doing it for six months. We're making it with the same machines we also use for manufacturing paper from wood. We need to refine the process a little here. This is entirely new territory for us, but we've made tremendous progress. We're already established in the packaging market, and I think grass paper and grass carton has a promising future. The product is especially interesting for the packaging industry. We have a selection here where we can see the product is very suitable for use in important areas of the food industry. We're currently producing fresh fiber products for fruit and vegetable trays for direct contact with food. And in contrast to recycled paper, it's also much healthier. We found that we save 75% of CO2 emissions in comparison to fresh fiber. This is due to the difference in preparation method. We no longer have to use any chemicals. We only need two liters of water instead of 6,000 liters of water per ton of raw material. And we only use a tenth of the energy. It is interesting to note that the labs and the companies are not acting in isolation. They are embedded in a supportive environment in global actions towards sustainability. This involves the University of Bonn with its sustainability centers, where the labs are members, and the United Nations in Bonn with their focus on environment, ecosystems, biodiversity, and climate change. Watch for yourself. The city of Bonn. It's close to European metropolises like Brussels, Geneva and Paris. And home to people from 175 countries. Right on the bank of the Rhine is the campus of the United Nations. 20 UN institutions and some 1,000 employees here are pushing ahead with Agenda 2030. 
It's a unique place that is continuing to grow thanks to solid support. Bonn is also a center for international conferences. Big international summits, environmental meetings and festival type events bring together visitors from around the world. Effective interactive clusters have developed here in the environment, climate and sustainability, as well as in education, science and innovation. So the UN campus in Bonn lives and breathes the United Nations 17 goals for sustainable development. They paved the way with a very visionary plan, so it made perfect sense to host the global campaign to promote the Sustainable Development Goal, to be together and to work together on finding policy, but at the same time on advocating and engaging citizens so that climate change and the other challenges of our society can be tackled. The world's most pressing issues going forward are writ large at the UN's location in Bonn. This is where the international community meets to discuss wildlife conservation, biodiversity, renewable energies, climate change, and risk management associated with natural catastrophes. Climate and sustainability policy is shaped on the global level while being implemented locally and internationally. Political, multicultural, and open to the world. The UN campus in Bonn. Now let's leave the global issue and go back to the local activities, go back to the experimental farm where we started our visit and our discussion. We hope you enjoyed the virtual visit and you got some benefit out of it.